The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as the star. You know, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half-hour's entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Me, <laughs> American people, they're what you call joiners. They like to belong to things. Guilds, unions, societies, associations, and they even got a club for animals. That's called the Elks. <laughs> Also, they got a one is they call it the mooses. <laughs> I'm supposed they have a meetings in the zoo. And I'll show you how these clubs, they make a nicer feeling between all the kinds of animals. I'm Marie, there were lions and the lambs the clubs, was a have a get together. <laughs> anyway, ever since I'm come to America, I'm hoping I'm could have joined something. So I too could have feel like I'm a belong. It's a wonderful thing to belong. But the only one who's the one to give me that feeling is my countryman Pasquale. <laughs> he wants his daughter Rosa should belong to me. <laughs> but I'm gonna want that to mama me. I'm gonna want to join the elephants. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I'm writing you so much about joining your things is because last week. Another antique dealer is a come into my store and... Uh... Hello, Mr. Basco. Oh, hello, Mr. Ellis. Uh, Mr. Basco, I want to thank you for that Lincoln item. How is there nothing to thank me about? Yes, there is. My customer came in and that statue did the trick. That's uh, funny. I'm going to have a Lincoln statue in my shop for almost uh, two years. and never do tricks uh, for me. <laughs> I mean, I made the sale. Here's your $30. Uh, that's what you paid for it, isn't it? Yes, and uh, thank you. Well, thank you. And now, um... Um, uh, what's the matter? Well, I'm just wondering about your cut. My, my cut? The mama me? You see blood or someplace? <laughs> no, no, your commission. After all, if it hadn't been for your generosity, I would have lost out. Matter of fact, my customer would probably have come in here and you would have made the sale. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Ellis. I'm a no seller. What? what? I wasn't going to sell a Lincoln. I was going to keep him. But when you found me, well, you're not an antique dealer. I'm a like to think we're all the same kind of people. I'm going to do that for you. You did the same thing for the Jones Curio Shop, didn't you? That's very nice of you, Mr. Basco. And what you just said is a mean more to me than a money. You know, I'm going to propose you for membership in our Antique Dealers Association. <laughs> Mr. Ellis, what you just said is a mean even more than what you said before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, our association should have more men like you. I'll propose your name today. Oh, thank you. You wonderful man. And no wonder the United States is a name an island after you. <laughs> island after me? Sure, that's the place I'm a first to come to in America, Ellis Island. <laughs> so, Mamma Mia, guess what's happening? Your son Luigi is going to belong to something. Here, just a little while ago, I'm going to receive a membership of blank. And Mamma Mia, you don't know what this means. For a little immigrant like a Luigi Basco to join a high-class antique dealers association is like for a girl to join a YMCA. <laughs> anyway, I'm so excited. And a membership blank is a place for further business reference to sign. So now I'm going to get a signature. And the first one I'm going to do naturally is my countryman Pasquale. Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, Pasquale. Hey, Pasquale, you can do me a big favor. Not as big a one as you can do for me. <laughs> 
All right, so let's forget what I said and start all over again. <laughs> no, Pasquale, please. Maybe you're helping me out, huh? That's mad. Are you in trouble? No, no, Pasquale. All I want is that you should sign this paper. Oh, no, I'm not signing nothing. It's only... It's only, it's only, it's only. That's all you ever say. Maybe they wrote that a new song after you. Zonely, zonely, come and dance the horror. No, no, that's not a place. Oh, no, I'm not signing nothing. Luigi, every time I sign a paper for you, either I get into trouble, I lose the money, or a man comes and takes away my furniture. Okay, but it was quite if only you would listen. Luigi, it took me 15 years to learn how to sign my name. It's the time you stop taking advantage of my talent. <laughs> Pasquale, this paper is for the antique dealers of America. And they want four signatures before I'm a kind of joint. Oh, is it not enough? I should have signed once, and now you want I should have signed four times. <laughs> What's this antique deal association? Oh, it's a big thing for me, Pasquale. First of all, it means that my business is good enough that I'm accepted by these businessmen. You see, they put a label on my window, and it's to say, this store is approved by antique dealers of America. That's a funny. I'm a belong to organization too, but they never put a sign in my windows to say this is spaghetti is approved by the restaurant association. <laughs> oh, Pasquale, association don't have to approve your spaghetti. Huh? That's approved enough by your customers. <laughs> hey, Luigi, you said me know how to flatter somebody. <laughs> Give me your blank, I sign. Oh, thank you, Pasquale. It's very important I'm going to have the right to character reference. And from you, it's going to be very good because you real the character. Yes. <laughs> and now, just to think, Pasquale, me, me, part of this big group, they're going to have a meetings, even a bigger fans. But I'm going to meet the people and get to know new people, have a new friends. That's smile. The friends you got now is no good. Oh, no, it's not that, that. Is it just that, just that when you meet the new people, they say your interest is, uh, is a broaden. Luigi, I don't like you should meet a new people. I like you should be interested with my daughter Rosa. As well as she's a too broad. <laughs> if that's the case, Luigi, then you don't want my signature. Here, take it back. All right, Pasquale. If you feel like that, then I'm going to my night school class and they sign the paper. Go. And I'm sorry for what I said before. You mean about my Rosa? No, but the your spaghetti. It's approved, all right. Not by your customers, but by big association. The Heart to Burn Association. All right, class. Attention, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Howitt? Here. Mr. Olson? Here. Mr. Schultz? Here. Miss Balding? Here. Oh, Mr. Schultz, what was the idea of calling my name? <laughs> well, Miss Balding, every night you call ours, so I just thought tonight I'd give you a chance to see how the other half lives. Smile, Miss All right, before we smile, let's get to our work for today. Well, class, today we're studying the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> Mr. Horowitz, what are you writing there? Oh, I'm signing a paper for Luigi. Signing a paper? What paper? The Declaration of Independence. What else? <laughs> Mr. Shaw. Hello, Miss Pauling. Is it not the Horowitz's fault? You see, oh, I'm right, Mr. Basco, but please do it after class. Now, Mr. Horowitz, suppose you answer the first question. With pleasure. You may tell us the date of the Declaration of Independence. 1776. Good. And by coincidence, it came out the holiday, July 4th. <laughs> of course, it was on July 4th, Mr. Horowitz, and that's why we celebrate the 4th as a holiday. I thought it was because the banks was closed. <laughs> In 1933, the banks were closed for two months, and there wasn't a holiday. Tim, we've got horrible information that Olsen carries around in his head. <laughs> Boy, is that so? Well, all can't... right, all right, all right. Let's not become disorganized. What's gotten into this class tonight? Now, the Declaration of Independence was signed on July 4th, 1776. Uh -huh. And for that reason, it has ever since been celebrated on a holiday. Uh, I mean, it became a holiday. <laughs> Just think, if the Declaration of Independence was finished on Labor Day, everybody would be out of town, and Jefferson would have to sign it 50 times. <laughs> that's enough, Mr. Schultz, that's enough. And Mr. Olson, what are you doing there? Oh. 
Oh, I, I am signing uh, Luigi's character reference paper. Oh, goodness. Mr. Basco, I asked you to hold that until after class. I'm a son of a spalding. It wasn't my fault. No. No, let us be fair and yours. Then I do something wrong by you, and I'm the first one to admit well, it. Well, all right, so all right. Any all right. punishment to be meted out in your judgment. Then let me be the one to bear the full wrong. All right, Mr. Because Austin. then I am wrong. Old, I'm old, Mrs. Trying to get you out of jail. Stop fighting your way back in. <laughs> For heaven's sake, will you please get yourselves back to order? I've never seen you this way. Oh, all, all right, sir. Right, right. All right. All right, now let's get back to our work. Mr. Basco, you may answer the next question. Yes, Miss Baldwin? You may name some of the signers. Some of the what, the? The signers? Yes, some of the signers. Well, so far I'm going to get the Horowitz and the Oscar. Oh, no, no, no. There was Thomas Jefferson, Samuel Adams, Button Gwynne. They never signed my character reference. <laughs> so this is just ridiculous. Such confusion. Mr. Schultz, you may answer... <laughs> Mr. Schultz, what are you doing now? Uh, well, I was just... <laughs> well, Miss Baldwin, don't get mad, but I'm signing Luigi's character reference. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, all of you, I've never seen the class this way before. Mr. Basco, you may hand me that paper and I'm going to tear it up. No, 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 Miss Barley. Give me that paper. All right. Uh, here. But Miss Barley, please. This paper represents a very important thing in my life. Chance to join any tick dealers of America. I'm going to four character references and I'm more than got a three. With just one more, I'm going to make the biggest step up since I'm in America. I'm able to belong to something, to be part of something. Well, Miss Spalding, what are you going to do? Well, what can I do? I'm going to sign it, too. <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, here's a way to make pleasant hours even more enjoyable. No matter what your favorite pastime is, you can add to the fun by chewing delicious Wrigley Spearmint gum. It's a treat to sink your teeth into a smooth piece of Wrigley Spearmint. The lively, full-bodied, real Spearmint flavor tastes mighty good and freshens your taste. And the smooth, easy chewing gives you enjoyment and satisfaction. So make every day more enjoyable by chewing healthful, refreshing Wrigley Spearmint gum. It's a treat that you can enjoy almost any time, anywhere. And it adds to the fun of whatever you're doing. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Vasco's letter to his mother in Italy. And so, mamma mia, everything has come out fine. And take the is is like my four references, and a son of me let us say they're going to come and look over my antiques at seven o'clock tonight. You see, my stuff is got to be real antiques, which means it was made before 1830. If it was made after 1830, it's not called antiques. It's called a second hand. <laughs> Mamma mia, I'm so excited about this committee coming. All the day, I'm going to go around to my store with a rag and I'm going to polish up my antiques so they all are going to look nice and old. Anyway, while I was working, who is it coming but the you-know-who? Well, well, you already joined the association yet, my little banana nodes? <laughs> no, not yet, not yet, Pasquale, but soon. And I'm going to do it without you. My schoolmates, they signed up for me. Ooh, ooh, that's a really scraping from the bottom of the barrel. I like to look at that application of blank. When they get through putting their X's on it, must have looked like a game of ticky-tacky-toe. <laughs> yeah, but I reckon I'd better than you, Pasquale. And what's some more, the signatures was accepted. It was? Yes, yeah, 7 o'clock tonight, the committee is coming to examine my store. They're going to examine your store? I uh -huh. suppose that the committee walks in and says, A store? I got to examine you. Open up your mouth and say, Ah. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You laugh at all the sound and say, happy Pasquale. What's the matter? Are you jealous? What? Me jealous? Or just because you joined in the ASPCA? Is it not to the ASPCA? Sure it is. American Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Antiquus. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to Luigi. When that committee sees the pile of junk you got to hear, they're going to recommend you join just one organization. The Salvation Army. <laughs> At least they find a good use for this stuff. Pasquale, you're just a man. That's the way you talk like that. 
Maybe I'm not a big like Marshall Field, but my little story is full of a genuine antics, and that's all the committee is coming to find out, to see if my story is honest. What are they going to do? Take down a statue of George Washington and give him the lie detective a test? Ah, no. <laughs> no, so long as i am got at least a 70% of real antics and I'm a don't lie about a faker one, then I'm a considered to be honest a business man. Oh, in other words, uh, if they catch you with a fake antique in the store, you out, eh? That's right. But that's uh, not uh, going to happen. <laughs> no, Luigi, that's uh, never going to happen. Uh, well, uh, goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Oh, boy, i got to fix it, that Luigi good. Uh, what have I got that's old besides Rosa? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Hi, Pasquale. How's business? Terrible, and you ain't eating the hair till you pay up what you owe. Well, what do I owe you? Four dollars and a seventy-five cents. Oh, come on, Pasquale, have a heart. I'm hungry. I'll figure out a way to pay you back, honest. Nothing to do with it. Now, you get out... Get, get, <laughs> wait a minute. Uh, you know Luigi? No. Never even seen the guy. Good. I got a great idea. Come on down the cellar with me. I got all the clock because they've been laying around for years. Now, the idea is for you to come in... <laughs> You sure got your store clean up and nice for these committee fellas. What time are they coming? On a few hours, seven o'clock. Mr. Ellis will help me straighten out everything to look good. Sure, these antiques sure look good. You uh, sure they all real, Luigi? Uh, don't worry, Pasquale. Since I'm coming to America, my big love is to study antiques. I think I'm going to recognize a real antique a mile away. Hmm. Pasquale, what do you mean, uh, Mmm. <laughs> Just what I said. Mmm. You know, Luigi, you never trust anybody. Your trouble is that when I'm going to mmm, you think I'm really saying a mmm instead of a mmm. <laughs> hello? Uh, I, I'd like to see the owner of this place. Oh, hello. I'm the owner. Oh, oh, it's a nice o'clock you got here. Oh, I'm glad you like it because I want to sell it. It was given to me by my grandmother. Ah, oh, very fine a grandfather clock. I mean by my grandfather. <laughs> uh, you see, <laughs> he gave it to my father and my father gave it to me. Uh, I don't have any son, so I'm stuck. Hey, Luigi, looks like it's real old. Yeah, Pasquale. One that the word was a very popular in the 18th century. From the coldness of a wood that looks like you kept it in a cellar, huh? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> it was kept in a cellar, all right. Well, mister, I'm got a bad news for you. You got a nice and a thick, but I'm no got enough for money to buy it. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, just a minute, mister. Don't go yet. Luigi, you got to have this piece of jug, uh, this stampede. <laughs> you got to have it even if I got to buy it for you. You? Pasquale, why you do this for me? Because I love you, little cabbage puss. <laughs> this clock will make a big impression on the committee, and I want to help you join. Uh, how much you want for this uh, genuine antique clock, mister? Well, I don't know. A hundred bucks, okay? Okay, leave the clock here. I take you in my store and give you the cash. Goodbye, Luigi. Oh, goodbye, Pasquale. And I thank you very much. It's a nothing, Luigi. And believe me, when I say it's a nothing, it's a nothing. <laughs> Come on, mister. Oh, oh, I beg you pardon, the lady. Oh, that's quite all right. I'm looking for something that... Hey, Joe, you was a very good. Yeah, yeah. I thought I handled it pretty well myself. <laughs> hey, you really got him fooled, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Shows how much he knows the green horn of boob. <laughs> hey, Joe. Huh? You don't owe me nothing for the food you ate here, and here's the ten dollars for your trouble, okay? Oh, very good. And any time you want some more clocks delivered, you just holler. <laughs> Yeah, wait till that committee gets a look at that clock. Is it going to be true? Finish! Out! Yeah. <laughs> no meetings and no parties and no people and nobody. The only one he'll have a left to look on is my Rosa. <laughs> oh, I'm a mean. <laughs> hey! Hey, Pasquale, look through that window. That dame just came out of Luigi's store with your clock. What? Hey, lady! Hey, lady, give me back that clock. What? 
Who are you, anyway? That clock belongs in that store. What are you talking about? I just bought it. What? Oh, that double crosser. I just paid $125 for this clock. Oh, look, lady, i got to have this clock back. I, I'll, I'll give you $150 for it, no questions asked. But why? Well, lady, <laughs> uh, i got a sentimental attachment for this clock. Uh, I'm going to give it to my father. He's going to give it to his father. If it's to go out of the family, it's going to break my great-grandfather's heart. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Here, lady, I, hundred fifty dollars of cash. That's a twenty-five dollars of profit for you. Well, I thank I, you, lady. Goodbye, goodbye. Hey, Pasquale, what are you doing with that clock? I'm just sold it. Fine, appreciative friend that you are. You take this clock for me, and then you sell it. You an Indian taker. <laughs> I'm bored and you should make a good impression on the committee. They're going to be here in a half hour. Well, thank you, Pasquale, but. But after all, that's my business. And when a lady is a one it, I'm a no good to turn it down. Oh, fine away, she's a one it. She's sold it back to me for $150. Now put that clock in the wind and don't let it out. I want the Pasquale, but tell me, why you do all this? Why you bought me this big clock? Why, why, why? Because I hate wristwatches, that's why. <laughs> Mamma mia, the committee should be here any minute. I'm, I'm, I'm getting nervous. Don't be nervous. I want to look on that clock, and when you tell them what all the history it's got, you become a member like this. <laughs> that sounds like they're throwing me out. It does. It does, lady. Hmm. And there's that, uh, hmm, again. <laughs> Pasquale, you worry me. What do you got to worry about? You made the money for me, you still got the clock. Yeah, but... But it's a look of funny with that sign. Genuine antique clock, a big bargain, not for sale. <laughs> That's so you don't get a greedy. Uh, hey, hey, here comes your committee. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm getting nervous. Hey, Pasquale, how am I looking? Huh? Is it my tight cleaner? My face is on a rest and everything. Hello, may we come in? Oh, hello. Sure, sure. Come on inside the place. Uh... I'm, I'm Luigi Vasco. You come from Antique Dealers Association, huh? Correct. I'm Leo White. This is Jack Hunter, and this is Bert Franklin. We're on the elections committee. How do you do? How do you do, uh, how do, you do too? Uh, uh, this, uh, this is uh, my friend, uh, Mr. Pasquale. Uh, how do you do, gentlemen? I'm pleased to make your acquaintanceship. <laughs> uh, by the way, what time is it? I have uh, seven. Hmm... Mr. Watches, they're so independable. You're right. I always carry a pocket watch. It's, uh, 7 2. Hmm. Oh, what the, what the Pasquale means. Uh, Mr. Basco, uh, if you don't mind, we'd just like to sort of walk around and examine your stock. Do you mind? Oh, I'm, I'm a no mind. Well, uh, don't look in the wind uh, too much. <laughs> You're liable to fall through. <laughs> Thank you. We'll just look. Maybe, maybe you gentlemen like to eat something while you look. I'm gonna get a nice fruit, the coffee, milk, tea, something. Not right now, thank you. Thank you. Hmm. They kind of stuck up, if you ask me. Pasquale, <laughs> they're judges, and they just don't want to examine the antiques so without they should be bothered. Funny thing, you know, my store customers will touch everything. Sometimes they even bite into it, then they return it. <laughs> <laughs> Come in here. It's pretty quick, huh? We even need for a look on the clock. Mr. Oh. Basco, it isn't really necessary for us to make more than a perfunctory survey. What uh, you see is a nice, huh? Yes, it is. But frankly, it's not particularly outstanding. It's authentic, but your stock is rather limited. Limited? On this basis only, I'm... Sure to you, right, Luigi. You want to be a social climber? These are gentlemen, they push you down. Please, please, Pasquale. Biggest thing you learn in the life of Luigi is to stay where you belong. Whales stay in the ocean. A fish stay in the sea. Little trout stay in the lakes. Sardines stay in the can. <laughs> now, Luigi, go on and get back in the can and lose in the opener. <laughs> As I was saying, Mr. Basco, on this basis only, I'm afraid we couldn't make a decision. However, there is one item which shows you to be a man of such rare perception and good taste that we will accept you into our association. What? Good, good taste? What item are you talking about? This clock, right here in the window. What are you talking about? Are you all a bunch of knuckleheads? <laughs> that clock that comes out of my cellar. 
This Luigi's got the worst taste you ever saw. Well, bad taste or not, Mr. Basco, as far as we're concerned, you're in the association. Good day, Mr. Basco. Good day, Mr. Basco. Oh, Mama, that's so wonderful. Goodbye, goodbye, gentlemen. I could have showed him myself. <laughs> My own clock that I pay for five fortunes for as I got him into the association. Oh, thank you, Pasquale. Thank you so much. Well, all right. Now I'm going to do you a little favor. The least that you can do is to do me a little favor. <laughs> you mean the Mary Rosa? Uh-huh. Nothing to do with Pasquale. Even if I would have liked to, wouldn't it be nice? But Why? Because, like you said, I'm got the worst taste in the world. <laughs> and that's the... Mmm, I'm been waiting for all day. So, Mamma Mia, everything has come out too wonderful. I'm now belong. Yes, I belong to big organization and the thick dealers of America. And a poor Pasquale. He's got no luck at all. After he's see what's happened with his clock, he's make the association of fellows go down in the cell and look around again. <laughs> I'm no know what they found. But it couldn't be good because yesterday... Border health to close down his restaurant until he cleans up for the sun. Love the sun, Luigi Vasco, Louis McGrath. <laughs> Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they'd like to remind you to stop at your merchant's display of chewing gum next time you're at the store. Get a few packages of Wrigley Spearmint Gum for yourself and for others you'd like to treat to something good. People really appreciate your thoughtfulness when you offer them a stick or two or a package of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. They know, as you do, that Wrigley Spearmint is a quality product and that there's lots of refreshing, long-lasting flavor and enjoyment in every stick. So treat yourself. Treat your family, treat your friends to healthful, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. It costs very little, and it tastes mighty good. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Mr. Howard. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Derman. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Balding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. The music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.